Hello Math 8 students, this is Utah Middle School Math Project 1.1a, Simplifying Linear Expressions. To get started we have a story. Uh, have you ever played a video game? Raise your hand if you've ever played a video game. Alright, this is something that you all can relate to in some way. We're going to kind of mathematize, mathematize the situation of playing a game. Uh, Emma is playing a popular video game and she's determined to beat the high score. Luckily, this is a kind of game where it saves her place. So each time she plays again, she picks up in the same place with the same number of points. Emma downloads the game on Monday night and she starts playing. She scores a bunch of points. Tuesday, she scores an additional 500 points. Wednesday, she actually plays enough that she doubles her score from the previous day. And on Thursday, she scores the same number of points that she scored on Monday. Miguel's teacher asks him to write an expression. He's pretty experienced. He's a little bit later on in the unit. So when Miguel is asked to write an expression, uh, he writes, sorry, that represents Emma's total after she has done playing Thursday. Miguel writes this, 2, open parentheses, P plus 500, close parentheses, plus another P. And Miguel's teacher says he's right. So let us determine what each of these parts actually represents so that we can understand where Miguel came from and how we can write these kinds of expressions as well. To get started, I need us to understand what is P? What does the P represent? Good, I'm happy to see a couple of hands. Will you go and discuss with your tables first? What do you think that P even represents? All right, who thinks they know and would like to share with the class? Awesome. Let's go, Federico. Points. Points when? When? Yeah. Read that again. Lachlan, what would you like to add to it? Yeah, points on Monday. Because when she first started playing, Monday night, she starts playing and she scores a bunch of points. Did I tell you how many points? No. So that P is not just going to represent the total of points, but specifically it's Monday's total of points. With that in mind, that helps set us up for success so that we can answer the following questions. Okay, what about P plus 500? What does that represent? What about the 2? Paying attention to where that 2 is. And what about the plus P? Again, paying attention to where that plus P is. Talk at your tables and see if you can find the meaning of each one of those. We're going to pause the recording as students discuss. Ready, set, go. All right, now that students have had a chance to discuss, let's see what we came up with. What does this P plus 500 actually represent? Uh, go ahead. Ivan. Yeah, it's Monday plus Tuesday. When we read that story again, we see uh, on Tuesday she scores an additional 500 points. So here we see Monday's total. And to that we're going to add Tuesday's points. So M plus, or sorry, P plus 500 represents Monday's total plus Tuesday's total. Or in other words, how many points she has at the end of day? Tuesday. When I look at this, I see that we have the P plus 500 in parentheses, but then I have that 2 right there on the outside. That 2 right there on the outside tells me something is happening. What does that tell me is happening? Uh, Brigham. Yeah, it's going to happen two times. So what does that actually represent? Not two days. It's not the two days. What is, what is that 2 that's happening two times? What does that actually represent, Angela? It does represent multiplication, so let's relate it to the story. What does that represent in the story? Jensie? Yeah. Wednesday, she doubles her score from the previous day. Remember how this P plus 500 is Tuesday? And what does she do on Tuesday? Sorry, what does she do on Wednesday? She doubles Tuesday's score. So what does this 2 represent? Doubling the score. What then does that plus P represent? I can see here's Monday's total. That's the P. We added 500 points. That's the end of the day Tuesday. We doubled that because that's what happened on Wednesday. We doubled the score. So what does that plus P represent? Ike. Exactly. Thursday, she scores the same number of points that she scored on Monday. Do I know how many points she scored on Monday? No, but I know what we're using to represent it. And we're representing that with 
P. So what does this plus P represent? Thursday's points added on. Thursday's points were the same as Monday's. Nevea thinks about this problem a little bit differently. Nevea wrote the expression 2p plus 1000 plus p. And the teacher also lets her know that she's correct. Miguel was correct. Nevea is also correct. Uh, how did rep how did Nevea represent the problem differently than Miguel? Talk at your tables. How did she represent it differently than Miguel? They're both somehow correct, so how are they different? Talk at your tables. Ready, set, go. All right, who would like to share? How did Nevea represent that differently? Okay, we'll go back to Ivan this time. Yeah, so here we can see P plus 500 has to be added together and then doubled. And she says, well, if I double this, isn't this the same as saying, Two, or sorry, doubling P is going to be 2P. And doubling 500 is going to be 1,000. In other words, we write this down, Nevea used the distributive property. The distributive property is when we multiply across parentheses. All right, so Miguel was correct. Nevea is correct. Let's see if you can also find a different way that, than what Miguel or Nevea did. Can you write an expression that represents Emma's end of day Thursday score. Talk at your table, see if you can find one more way that we can write this. Ready, set, go. All right, come on back to me. How else can I represent this? There's not enough hands. Go back and talk at your tables. How else can I represent this? If these were algebra tiles, if it was like what we did on our warm up. what would we do here? Talk at your tables, I wanna see lots of hands. We're going to pause the recording as students talk at their tables. All right, come back to me now. How else can I represent this? Ivan. Yep, guys, if I have two P here and another P here, what do I have all together? Hmm. Plus... All of those unit tiles, do you really want to draw 1,000 unit tiles? No, but does that mean we can no longer think about these in terms of algebra tiles? No, just because you don't want to draw 1,000 doesn't mean you cannot visualize it. You should still be visualizing what this looks like. And if I have two X tiles and another third X tile hanging out over here, doesn't it make sense to have them join together? 2P plus another P is 3P plus a thousand unit tiles that I don't want to draw. If Emma scored 700 points on Monday, evaluate each of the three expressions above to determine how many points Emma has on Thursday. This is a new word, a new vocabulary word. I need you to highlight it. We're also going to write it in big bold letters off to the side because it is going to be part of your homework, part of your vocabulary, and when it's actually time to do your homework, you might forget. So we're going to leave ourselves some big notes that our eyes are going to be drawn to. I'm not going to tell you what it means mathematically yet. I think it's pretty clear what it means. I'm telling you, hey, guess what? I know how many points Emma scored. Remember how in the beginning we said we don't know and it was just a bunch of points? Guess what? Now? I know. Emma scored 700 points. So P is equal to 
700. So if p is equal to 700, let's go back into this expression. If p is equal to 700, what do I now know? This p is 700. What am I supposed to do with that? Add it to 500. And if that's hard, simplify it. What's 7 plus 5? 12. So what's 700 plus 500? 1,200. What am I supposed to do with that then? Multiply it by 2. So what's 1,200 multiplied by 2? 2,400. Now add another P, which I now know is 700. That was a lot to keep track of in your brain. 700 plus 500 is 1,200. 1,200 doubled is 2,400. 2,400 plus 700 is equal to 3,100. Eyes on your eyes on my screen. We are going to do this in our calculators as well. We have two parentheses p plus 500. Close parentheses plus another p. But remember how I already told you? Hey, I know what that p is. Instead of p, what am I going to change those to? 700. So I'm going to get rid of that p, include a 700. I'm going to get rid of this p and change it to 700. Is the 2 supposed to be a 3? Did she triple her points or did she double her points? She doubled them. That's okay. And here's the fun thing about these calculators. They understand the order of operations. So it's going to know I need to do 500 plus 700 first. And then I'm going to multiply and double that. And then I'm going to add and do the 700. Calculator agrees that it's 3,100 or 3,100. Now let's continue. That was using Miguel's. Am I going to get the same thing if I use Nevaeh's? Let's see. Remember, I'm telling you, oh yeah, I didn't know what the P was before, but now I know that the P is equal to 700. So let's do that. So what is this going to be? 2 times P plus 1,000 plus another P only. I know that that P actually represents 700. So 2 times 700 plus 1,000 plus another 700. Again, let's try and do this in our heads first, and then we can use our calculator. What's 2 times 700? And if that's too hard, make it simple. What's 2 times 7? 14. So 2 times 700 is going to be 1,400. Add 1,000. 1,400 plus another 1,000. 2,400 plus another 700 is indeed 3,100 again. And let's use our calculators once again. Our calculators understand the order of operations, so we can use them. 2 times P, which I know is 700, plus 1,000, plus that last day, Thursday, when we scored an additional 700 points. And what do you get? 3,100 once again. And finally, what about our own version? Where again, I say 3P plus 1,000, but I remember that P is 700. So what do I do with that? Multiply it by 3. 3 times 7 is 21, so 3 times 700 will be 2100. 2100 plus another 1,000 is equal to 3100 or 3100. And one last time in our calculators using our tools, we have 3 times 700 plus 1,000 is indeed 3,100. Practice using our calculators, practice using our brains, and now I want you to take just a, just a second. What does it mean to evaluate? We did evaluating. What does that mean to evaluate? Talk at your tables and see if you can figure out the meaning of that. You're talking at your tables. What does evaluate mean? Ready, set, go. Who would like to give it a try? 
put it in your own words. What do you think evaluate means? Angela. Okay, Brigham. Okay, so the whole big long expression was able to simplify down to just one single number, which was 3,100. You're, you're on the right track. Uh, Ike. Okay, not a bad guess. It means equal to because I was able to say all of that equals to 3,100, right? Here's the thing that you're missing. Was I able to do any of that without telling you what the number of points were? I had to tell you what the number of points were first, right? Okay, we're gonna come back and talk about evaluate in just a second. So in this lesson, we are going to study linear expressions. Uh, you guys know the meaning of this word. Let's see if you remember it from last year. Linear, what does linear mean? Ike. Line, linear means line. The first four letters of that word spell line. But here's why I'm going to ignore this part. Linear expressions, that means when we graph it, it will be a line. But guess what? We're not going to be graphing them. So most of the time, I'm going to refer to these as simply expressions. Miguel, Nevea, and you all wrote linear expressions or simply expressions to represent Emma's total number of points on Thursday. A linear expression or simply an expression is a mathematical phrase consisting of numbers, unknowns, that would be symbols that represent numbers, and arithmetic operations. I'm going to say it a different way and I want you to write it down because that's that's very accurate and very precise, and I still want to be precise, but I want to make it a little bit more clear. An expression is simply a math sentence. They say it's a mathematical phrase, and that's great, but I'm going to simplify it and say it's just a math sentence. Now, in English, you might use things like words, uh, punctuation, capital letters. In math, our math sentences don't contain those things. In math, it contains numbers, it's the same thing as what it says here, numbers, unknowns, which is symbols that represent numbers, or said another way, that's just variables, numbers, variables, and of course, operations. Operations would be things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division that are going to connect those numbers and variables. So below we can see all of these are examples of linear expressions. 3x minus 5, remember how mathematicians are lazy, we actually have two operations here. We have 3 times x minus 5, so we have numbers. We have variables and we also have operations, things like multiplication and subtraction. Even 3x, where sometimes we forget that there's an operation, this is still an expression because it really represents 3 times x. Numbers, variables, and operations that connect them. And they can be really big and long, like what we had to simplify on our warm-up, or even in what we had with Miguel's. We have grouping symbols that show that these are added together and then multiplied. We have extra addition at the end. This is the one that gets to be confusing. This is still an expression. No, there are no operations. There are no variables. This would be one that is completely simplified. But even just a number can still be an expression. It would just be a simplified version of that expression. 
Let's move on. Turn the page. The next thing we want to talk about is equivalent linear expressions or equivalent expressions. The root word here of equivalent is simply equal. Two expressions are considered equivalent or equal when a substitution of any number for the unknown p in the expression produces the same numerical result. That's a mouthful. Let me explain what that means. You guys stay on your page. I'm going to flip over. Remember how at the end we said, what if we pretend that p is 700? We plugged it into this one. And what did we get? 3,100. We plugged it into this one. And what did we get? 3,100. And we plugged it into this one. And what did we get? 3,100. Those are equivalent expressions. They're different steps in our simplifying process. Here is the last vocabulary word. Substituting in a specific number for the unknown in an expression and then calculating the resulting value is called evaluating the expression. Again, that is a very precise, very specific definition. Let's simplify what that actually means. When I ask you to evaluate, which I am going to ask you multiple times throughout this lesson, evaluate means. I'm going to give you a value, like saying P is equal to 700. When the value of a variable is given, So when I told you P is equal to 700, that was me giving you the value of the variable. And then I took that value and I substituted it in. Instead of keeping it P, I said, hey, let's use the value, which is 700. I made a substitution. Okay, so when the value of a variable is given and substituted, in the expression. Then the expression is simplified. We're going to practice evaluating throughout the rest of this lesson. But I am out of time for today, so that is the end of this. We are going to continue right where we left off um, in our next lesson, in our next video. Uh, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.